Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the uh, EC Extended uh, model for today's uh, second video. So uh, this is the 30-day uh, look ahead for the uh, UK and for the rest of Europe as well. Uh, we will extend out to uh, weeks 5 and 6 also uh, in this uh, video. And uh, I shall get on that for you very shortly. It's back after being off uh, last week. Just say that the first video resales are 7 a.m. upload. Got a 10 to 14 day with all operator features coming up for you later this afternoon as well please like share subscribe on videos thank you so much everybody uh for doing that for a uh, gas service thank you so much to uh ecm.int for supplying us uh with the charts right so we shall begin with the uh mean cell pressure anomaly for week one which will take us from the third through to the tenth of january the coming week looks unsettled for much of europe low pressure is in from the atlantic into northern and western europe We've got high pressure pulled out into the Atlantic here. We're bringing in the wind flow and jet stream probably on a northwest south piece of light. It's a little bit of ridging over towards the far eastern uh, part of the Mediterranean, but otherwise it looks a pretty unsettled scene, I have to say, through uh, most parts of uh, Europe in the weekend. Uh, the 500 millibar height dominant from the Arctic view down shows below average heights, low pressure into the north and west of Europe, a ridge of above average heights over on the east side of Europe and out into the Atlantic as well. Jet stream is doing something a little bit like that. So it looks very unsettled across the northern western parts of Europe. A ridge of high pressure flow over onto the eastern side of Europe. Might bring up some drier and warmer weather into this uh, southeastern corner, uh, perhaps. Let's have a look at the temperature. Only. That's what it shows. So across eastern Europe, from like Italy, the Adriatic, uh, you know, uh, all the way over to Black Sea, looks generally uh, above average, particularly through here, where we're like 6 to uh, six to 10 degrees uh, above average, so, so a really warm anomaly up here. That does extend up the east side of Europe as well, so uh, Ukraine looks really mild, southwestern Russia as well, looking quite mild. Coldest in the north and in the northwest, actually. So Scandinavia, uh, colder than average, many parts of northeastern Europe, Baltic sea regions uh, look rather Colder than average too. A little bit below average for Ireland and the UK. And just generally down the western side of Europe. No better than average really through much of the low countries. Western Germany, France, down into uh, Spain and Portugal. The central part of the Med also looks a little bit on the cool side as well. So it is definitely like on this eastern side of uh, Europe where, where things look warmest. Around Greece and Turkey looks pretty warm there. So uh, not too bad. Perhaps if you want uh, a little bit of winter sunshine, that's the place to go, maybe Greece. The uh, precipitation army also looks a little bit on the drier side when it's these, through many of these eastern uh, parts of Europe and the eastern portion of the Mediterranean. So, yeah, if you want a bit of winter sunshine, I reckon hop on a plane and go to Greece. It might not be too bad there. Elsewhere, though, it looks quite unsettled. Southern parts of Spain and Portugal are a bit wet. The central bowl of the Med. Uh, rather unsettled. I mean, going further north, we have like a, uh, a low pressure track from the Bay of Biscay all the way over to western parts of Russia. Going northwards, we see that the UK uh, and Ireland again looking a little bit on the unsettled side, but particularly wet through France, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, and into southern parts of uh, Germany as well. Um, further north of that, into Scandinavia. So uh, it looks a little bit dry through uh, Norway, but perhaps a bit wetter through uh, Sweden and going over the uh, Baltic Sea and towards those uh, northeastern countries as well. Right, so that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two, which will be the 10th through 17th of January. All change, high pressure comes back. So we get this area of high pressure building in then from the Azores into western parts of uh, Europe. We've got low pressure here across the southern, southeastern parts of Europe and around Greenland and Iceland. So the jet stream is going northwards uh, up to Scandinavia. And it, it means many parts of Western Europe in particular are going to be mild but drier here with the coolest, wettest weather maybe transferring into that southeastern corner. The week to uh, 500 millibar height anomaly is looking like this. So again, you see that ridge of above average heights building from the Atlantic into northern and western Europe. Lower pressure, below average heights down here. Of course, lots of low pressure in around Greenland and uh, Iceland uh, as well. The temperature anomaly looks like that. So it is a bit of a flip around. It's going uh, significantly above average in the far north, northwest of Europe. Scandinavia goes significantly warmer, but or milder than average. And that does uh, include the UK and Ireland as well. Conversely, these uh, sort of southern 
western southwestern parts of Europe are getting colder. So, like France, Spain, Portugal, through much of the Mediterranean into Italy, some parts of uh, Germany, uh, and, uh, and then maybe towards the Balkans as well, going cold on average through those uh, areas. The southeastern corner of the Med also looking rather colder, so that's quite a significant change as well, with the warmest anomalies being squeezed towards the Black Sea. Even western Russia going a little bit colder. So away from the far north and northwest, actually most parts of Europe are looking quite cold as we go into uh, into week two. Just the far northwest of Europe where we have influence from a jet stream off the Atlantic, but we keep it uh, milder. Precipitation anomaly showed lots of dry weather through much of Europe. You can see where the jet stream and the low pressures are. They're up here. Uh, so, yeah, unsettled like through, from uh, from the North Atlantic through Iceland in towards Norway. Uh, otherwise, a lot of dry weather really from through Western Europe, from Ireland and Portugal in the far west, all the way over to Russia in the east. Most areas are dry of an average under that area of high pressure, particularly so across western parts of Europe. Uh, down into the Med is more unsettled in the southeastern corner of the Mediterranean. So you can see some big thunderstorms uh, coming through uh, there. But otherwise, the western part of the Med has going a little bit drier. Week 3 will be the 17th, 24th of January. The high pressure then sort of pulls out back into the Atlantic. It was only trying to reach north a little bit, but it's not really a mid-Atlantic ridge. And then a trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia, sent for jet stream and wind flow on a northwest southeast alignment, some lower pressure across the eastern and southeastern parts of the Europe as well. The 500 millibar height on looks like that. So low pressure up here, below average heights around green and ice, but also extending down through northern and central parts of Europe in particular. High pressure is just there. So it probably keeps the far west of Europe generally quite mild. But actually most areas of Europe, I would have thought of going colder here with a dip in the jet stream within that 500 millibar flow. The temperature anomaly looks like that. So overall quite a coolest scene actually. The mildest temperatures pulling out to the west and over in the far eastern part of Europe. Otherwise, it's colder than average around Greenland and Iceland. Colder than average through much of the central and southern part of Europe uh, as well. And all these areas that are shaded in the white that have no signal, really, I reckon they could probably get quite cold in the end, especially the central regions uh, just here, like Germany, Poland. I reckon this could be quite a cold week, and into Scandinavia too. The UK line probably will be on the periphery of that due to a proximity of the high pressure. But that could be a cold week widely, I think, actually, across many parts of Europe. Uh, and then the precipitation on if week three looks like that. So uh, driest out here around uh, Spain and Portugal. That's where the high pressure is, of course. Wettest up in the north and west of Europe, but also to some degree extending into central parts of Europe. So again, you see where the dip in the jet stream is probably coming in from uh, through there. So yeah, I reckon like northern Europe, Scandinavia, Baltic Sea areas, um, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, those areas might be turning a lot colder here around mid part of January. And that could be extending down to some central parts of Europe like, like Germany, Poland, Ukraine, might get quite a lot colder. Uh, as well, and, and more unsettled too, with, uh, you know, uh, increasing risk of some snow. That could be a more wintry week. Week 4 will be the 24th to the 31st of January. Um, so then the high pressure builds back in to the western part of Europe. That will bring the milder air back in to the west of Europe, as, uh, of course. Otherwise, not much of a signal through the through rest of Europe. So I'll just put in a couple of pressure marks. There's low pressure up here. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar. High anomaly looks like that. Going much more zonal for the last week of January. High pressure is to the south and low pressure is to the north. So that brings in western areas. Certainly to western parts of Europe anyway. There is a bit of high pressure lurking up here. Um, you know, across the northwest parts of Russia. But at this point, not any suggestion of, of an easterly pushing across Europe. Temperature anomaly is going milder in the north and west of Europe again. So this is uh, another milder week. Uh, as we go into the final week of January for the far northwest of Europe, colder in the southeastern corner. Otherwise, lots of white, lots of no signal going on. I suspect the north and west is turning milder, and the south and the east probably uh, rather cold. And then the uh, precipitation anomaly looks like that. Again, not much of a signal. It's very, very rarely years when you get through to week four. We can see that it's dry around here, though. That's where the Azores High is uh, reaching. You see how it extends all the way back to the Azores. With low pressure up here, it's a classic sort of westerly zonal signal for the last week of January. Right, we'll just have a look at weeks 5 and 6 data before we go. So this is week 5, 31st of January to the 7th of February. 
Um, so high pressure then across much of southern Europe with low pressure up here. This is going to bring in lots of mild weather probably across uh, many parts of Europe. Uh, 500 millibar high tumbling again shows up to a ridge of, uh, of high pressure there across central, southern, west parts of Europe. Low pressure is up here. Obviously, that's going to drag up those southwest. So, this is going to be a mild week, maybe a very mild week. Start February, yeah, we see that uh, quite clearly. Most of uh, northern and western Europe looking really mild there. And then, uh, precipitation wise, uh, not much of a signal, but I would expect west is in the north and, and driest in the south. And, when, and then, week, five, week six, I should say will be the 7th to the 14th of February. Uh, will it do anything cold? It's going to take a while to load up. There we go. Uh, and no, that's not very good for cold weather either. We've got a high pressure set up over Italy and the Alps, which is going to drag up again those uh, long fetch southwesterlies. So this could be shaping up to be an exceptionally mild first half to February. If this comes up, 500 millibar high to time looking like this. The e7jf.it website running very slowly now so hopefully we'll be able to get through this before we end uh so yeah lots of high pressure dominating uh that's going to be a warm ridge that will be dragging up the air from a very 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 long way uh you know uh south and the uh the temperature anomaly is going to be warm i think for most parts of uh, europe certainly the north and west anyway so uh yeah really warm temperature anomaly there through much of western Northern, uh, Central Europe. It is colder over towards the far east and southeast of Europe. So that's where the cold air is, like through into the Middle East, for example. And uh, the precipitation on me, lastly. Um, so a little bit wetter than average through the far north and northwest Europe, mostly dry and average through the southern parts of Europe. Except for that one week in the middle of January, this looks pretty bad for anybody who wants cold weather. Uh, this winter, a complete write-off, basically, uh, all the way up to the middle of February, cold weather for Western Europe, except maybe that one week in January. But otherwise, the ECM at WF.IT uh, season model has really gone to town with a very, very mild winter. The only thing I say about this is back in December, we did have an update where, um, you know, uh, it was going for, like, blocking for nearly six weeks and, and, and like, easterlies and really cold weather. So I reckon a lot of these sex models are governed by the current conditions. Um, you know, at that point in December, when it when it went very cold, we was flirting with that big Christmas cold spell that eventually went down the tubes. And since that cold spell went down the tubes, the model has swung into a much milder, um, you know, a much milder intro. I have been keeping an eye on it over Christmas, although I've not been doing videos with it over Christmas. But, um, yeah, you know, I think it's governed by what's going on right now a lot of the time. And I'm saying to you, CFS and the JMA and whatnot, they, they are very, you know, governed by the current conditions and just try and keep that going all the time, be it mild or cold. Um, so we'll see. Maybe that we're going to write off here for this winter and it'll be mild from beginning to end with no cold weather and barely any snow whatsoever. It might be we'll get a flip at some point. Any forecast beyond five, seven days is fraught with danger and comes with health warnings, so we shall just wait and see. But certainly this particular update this week is really bad for anybody who wants colder weather this winter. It doesn't get much worse. Right, we'll be back shortly with your tent of 14 there that will include all of the regular features, so come back for that then. For this week's EC extended 30-day forecast for the uh, UK and for the rest of Europe as well. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.